Welcome to the Truth Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Benitez. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we're continuing the series that we started called New Creation Realities. New Creation Realities. And man, this is super, super important. And I know, um, honestly, I say that about pretty much every single episode we have. Because everything that we teach at this ministry, I want you guys to truly understand this. Everything that we teach from the Bible in this ministry is revelation that God has revealed or unveiled to me for you. The Bible says that Paul said, this grace was given to me for you. And that's the job of a minister. That's the job of a pastor, of a teacher, of a a, a spiritual leader in the body of Christ is the light. The revelation that that the man of God or the woman of God that they receive from that abundance, from the heart, not from the mind. You see, this is what sets every other podcast apart from us. Because what we teach is not it's not theology, it's not theory, it's not self effort, it's not self help, it's not anything intellectual. It is from the heart. It is it is the light that the Lord has given me, uh, given to me for you and that is what what is going to break you out of any type of barrier or bondage or stronghold it is revelation truth that sets you free so we're continuing uh, this series called new creation realities and i i can't stress the importance of this topic i mean you have to understand that when you got born again You have to begin to comprehend. I was listening to one of my favorite teachers today, uh, Andrew Womack. And he was saying, he was stressing, I should say, the importance of understanding. Because far too many times you can listen to a sermon, listen to a teaching, listen to whatever. Read A, B, and C, go on YouTube. Whatever it is, you can listen to it, but until you are able to truly comprehend, truly understand, that's why Paul prayed the prayer, which we're not going to get into today because it'll just take up the whole episode, about receiving the spirit of wisdom and revelation, understanding. Understanding is super important. It needs to go past your mind, past your brain. Your brain can't understand it. I'm not talking to your brain. I'm talking to your heart. So... This is so important. And if you are able to grasp and begin to walk this out, like I said in the previous episode, and work out your salvation, this is a daily walk. This is something that you have to implement on a daily basis. I have to implement this on a daily basis. I have to wake up and reckon myself or appropriate this mindset every single day. We all have to do it. So the more repetition of this that you hear, the more that you renew your mind, the more understanding you have, the more uh, this truth is established in your heart, the e- the more one it becomes with your soul. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we're going to continue. And the anchor scripture is obviously it's 2 Corinthians 5.17. That is such a... A common scripture even when I first got saved I saw it a lot I saw it quite often but it wasn't until I meditated on it it wasn't until I saw it it wasn't until I asked the Lord into the Bible says ask and you shall receive seek and you will find knock and the door will be open unto you so it is a hunger so to speak of the heart of the soul to find this truth so let's start with that scripture, and then we're, we're going to get into um, Ephesians chapter 2. So go with me to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And this is the anchor scripture for this series. The Bible says this, and I'm reading out of the King James Version. It says this, Therefore, if any man, or if anyone, if any man be in Christ, who is who is this in Christ person that the Bible is talking about? In other words, if you have received Jesus into your heart, if you have confessed, the Bible says with the heart you believe 
unto salvation with with the heart you man believe unto unto righteousness with the mouth confession is made unto salvation in other words if you believe in your heart if you confess Jesus as your lord if you receive him into your life that puts you in Christ so if any man if any person in, be in Christ if any man be in Christ he is a new creation a new creation old things are passed away behold all things have become new all things have become new remember you are a spirit you have a soul made up of your mind your will your emotions that's where your conscience abides so you are a spirit but you have a soul your personality and you live inside this body so when you got born again what became new did your body no did your soul no because you still if when you got born again you still thought the same way you still had the same mindsets you if you didn't know a trigonometry before you got born again all of a sudden you, you just did it you, you, it's not like you knew the entire uh, knowledge of of whatever specific facet that you want to get into. No, what got born again was your spirit. Your spirit before you got born again was dead in trespasses and sins. That spirit was dead. That spirit had the nature of the devil. That spirit, the dead old man, the Bible calls him the old man. That old man had the nature of sin. You know, see, the reason I drank and did drugs and was afraid of literally a rat, the 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 Chuck E. Cheese ma mascot, the reason why all those things started to manifest in my life before I got born again, because before I got born again, the spirit that I had was a dead spirit. The spirit that I had was a, had a sinful nature. I sinned, I drank, I did drugs, and many, many other things. All those things, I did that, why? Because I wanted to? No, a dog barks because he is a dog. A cow meows because she, they are a cat. So in the same exact way, before you got born again, it, was, it wasn't the sins that you committed that made you a sinner. It was the very fact that that is who you were. You had the nature. You didn't know nothing else but to sin. You didn't know nothing else but to lie, but to do, but to, to do wicked things. And it takes great humility for even a Christian. I found this. For even a Christian to come to that acceptance. Because far too many Christians, see, if you would begin to draw the line, and this is what I'm trying my best by the Spirit of God to, to establish. If you would draw the line on a piece of paper, it might help you to do this or visualize it if you're driving. Draw the line. On one end, it was the old man. Remember, Christianity is not religion. It's not you trying to do better. It's not the old addict quitting, drinking, Quitting doing drugs and then following Jesus. Incorrect. Incorrect. Not true. It is the old man. Draw the line. Visualize this if you're dry if you're driving. On one a part of the of the paper, you have the old man in Adam, the Bible says, who the nature was was had a sinful nature, the nature of the devil. The Bible says that you were the child of wrath. You had a sinful nature. Your spirit was dead. You you had the nature to sin. You you had the spirit of fear. That's why you were afraid of everything before you got born again. That's on and and there's many 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 other things. But just to kind of focalize it on what we're talking about today. On one end, visualize this. One end of the paper, you have the old man on the other end, you have the new man. And that is what I'm, uh, that is the grace that God has given me to unveil this dominion, to unveil your identity. I'm here to tell you, to teach you who you are in the spirit, to tell you that the old man is dead, the old woman is dead, that you are no longer a recovering addict. You are no longer a recovering alcoholic. You are no longer someone who had suicidal tendencies that, you know, one season is good, another season is bad. No, that man, that woman who was in bondage, 
bondage to the devil, who was a slave to alcohol, to this world system, to fear, to depression, to insomnia. That old person is dead. I'm drawing the line. And now I'm going to tell you who you are. If that person is dead, then who are you in the spirit? You see, this is what this is what what Jesus and this is what it frustrates me when I would go to churches and, and listen to so many religious talk where this is what Jesus came to bring. He didn't come to bring religion. He came to die. Yes, that is true. He came to die and pay the price for the entire world. That's why the entire world was in Jesus Christ, whether they receive him or they don't. Whereas that in the Bible, in the book of Jude, it says that the grace of God has appeared unto all men. Jesus Christ died for the entire world. Every sinner, whether they receive him or they don't, he paid the price. Sinners that reject, or, or if it's too strong for you, people who don't receive Christ, who don't receive Christ into their life, they, will, they are going to go to hell with their sins paid for. But the, the sins that they're committing is not going to send them to hell. The sin that is going to send them to hell is the very sin of unbelief, not believing in the Son of Man, not believing the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God, the gift of God. So you have to understand, this was the crowning achievement of Jesus Christ, was this new creation. And for a pastor, for a teacher, for a church, for a denomination, for a religious organization to simply be dismissive and omit this revelation. It is frustrating the grace of God because this new man, this new creation is what Jesus Christ came to bring. He died on the cross, but he didn't stay dead. When he rose again, that was the beginning of the new creation, the first born from the dead. This new creation was the crowning achievement of Jesus Christ. It wasn't, I'm going to say something that is going to startle some people, but the remission of sins was not the crowning achievement of Jesus Christ. What was the crowning achievement of Jesus Christ is the new man, the new creation. Because if Jesus Christ and it would have been good enough. But if Jesus Christ would have just come to die on the cross and save me from hell and paid for my sins, that would have been good enough. But I would have still been that old drug addict, the old uh, thief, the old man, the old alcoholic. But now I would have just been a sinner saved by grace. I would have just been the old person, but I'm just forgiven. Dealing with the same tendencies, but hey, at least I'm not going to hell. But that is not what Jesus Christ came to do. He came, and this is, this is what I'm trying my best to, to unveil. He came to bring a new creation, a new man in Christ who has a divine nature. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 to look at it in the scriptures. Ephesians 2, let's start in um, verse 12. Actually, let's go to verse 11 because I can't start when, it, when it's a comma in the beginning of a scripture. So let's go to Ephesians 2 verse 11. It says this, Therefore remember that you in times past, Gentiles, when you hear Gentiles, it just means someone who is not a, who is not a, a, a Jewish descendant. You're not a Jew. We were, all of us, I was a Gentile. We're, we, we were all Gentiles. So a Gentiles is a non-Jew. Therefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand. So this is what this is saying is that remember that you were a Gentile, that you were called the uncircumcision by the Jews. The Jews called the Gentiles uncircumcision. It's, it's pretty simple. But verse 12 says this. Listen to this. That at that time. What time? Is this talking about a see you when you read the scriptures? I want to give you a key a key a tip here. When you read the scriptures, I want you to look at the the tense of it. Is it present tense? Is it past tense? Is it future tense? So verse 12 says that in the time in that time, in past times, you were without Christ. Remember, this is talking about someone who's born again, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Verse 13. 
But now in Christ Jesus, you were who, you who sometimes were afar off have been made nigh or have been made near or have been drawn near by the blood of Christ. Verse 14, for he, Jesus, is our peace, having, having made both one. What is he talking about? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into it now. Having be, uh, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. What this is saying, he's saying he, Jesus Christ is our peace who has made both one. What is he talking about? He's talking about, and he's going to say it in the next couple of scriptures. He's talking about, he took from the Jew and the Gentile. It says he made a new man. I heard this in church uh, recently, and it, it's so incorrect. Someone said, am I, I'm not going to say who, but someone said that, that he, that it, what this is saying is that from the Jew and the Gentile, he, he brought the Jew and the Gentile together and made a new community of Christians. That's incorrect. That's not what this is saying. What this is saying, and it's going to expound it in the next couple of scriptures, but I'm going to unveil this to you. What this is saying, it says that he has made both one. He, he says he's made the Jew and the Gentile into one new creation. It's not a Jew and a Gentile commingling, fellowshipping together. No, it is a new creation. You see, if you have to understand this, that he didn't. So when God sees humanity, he sees three races. He sees the Jew. He sees in Adam, the Gentile. And he also, see, and he also sees the Christian, the new creation. You have to understand that. Verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enemy, which is the law of commandments. Jesus Christ, and this is for a whole other sermon, but I want you to hear this. Jesus Christ, what this is saying, Jesus Christ came to, he, he fulfilled the law. In other words, Jesus Christ, he came and he kept the entire law, then canceled the law, and then removed, abolished the law, and made one new uh Humanity, a new species, a new type of human race. That's a good way to put, uh, to put it. A new type of human race. You have someone who is in Adam, and now you have. This is a new type of. This is a new type of of being. A new species. A new human race. That's why it's not the Jew and the Gentile, and then coming together and then having a new community following Jesus. Incorrect. Jesus Christ came to create a new human race, a new man. The Bible says a peculiar people, a, a peculiar people, but you are a holy priesthood, a peculiar people that you would show forth the praises of his grace who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's in first or second Peter. That, that's saying that Jesus Christ, this is, this is what I'm trying to to express that Jesus Christ came to create a, huge, a, no, a new human race, a new type of species, a new race who is fully God and fully man. It's not the Jew and the Gentile anymore. Jesus Christ came to do, he did the law, he kept the law. The Bible says in the, in the book of Galatians that he was born under the law, he kept the law. To redeem those who were from the law. So he came, he did, he fulfilled the law, he kept it, he he canceled it, abolished it, put it out of the way, and now he created a new man. It's not a it's not a refurbishment, it's not a renovation, it's not you try, it's not you cleaning up, it is the old man died, and you are a new man, a new creation. Verse 15, having abolished in his flesh, that means by his death, the enemy, the law was the enemy of humanity. The Bible says, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. 1 Corinthians 5, 15 verse 56, the strength of sin is the law. The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. For without the law, Romans chapter 7, sin was dead. The Bible says, Romans chapter 7 again, I was alive without the law once, but when the law came, sin revived and I died. By, for The Bible says that by the law, it deceived me and by it slew me. The law is the enemy of humanity. Now, is the law 
bad? No, the law is holy. Why is it the enemy of humanity? Because we are, the Bible says, because you are carnal. A spiritual law cannot, does, does not do anything to someone who has flesh and blood. Now listen to this. It says this, for to make in himself of two, one new man, and so making peace. M to make in himself, and this is what I want to focus on today. To make in himself of two. What is he talking about? He, from The Jew and the Gentile is no more. Why do you think Paul was like getting stoned to death? I mean, listen. <laughs> this was at the time, and, and it's, it's still, nothing's really changed. There's a lot of Christians in, in Pentecostals and Word of Faith and many other denominations who love the law. So imagine being Paul saying, hey, the law was the enemy of you, and Jesus Christ came to, to fulfill it, and he abolished it. And actually, there's actually it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or if you're not a Jew. What matters is the new man. That's actually the scripture. Circumcision doesn't avail anything, nor uncircumcision. What matters is the new creation. Nor female, nor male, but the new man, the new creation. This is the crowning achievement that he came to do, was to bring a new species, a new type of man. What manner of man is this? That you are not the same. And if I'm telling you, and I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will begin to quicken your mind to the words that I am speaking right now. Because, I'm, because there's only so much... A uh, uh, English language that I can try to convey this spiritual truth. Jesus Christ came to create a new type of man, a new species. He says he of two, one new man, the new man in Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians, uh, put on the new man in Christ, who is holy and who was made holy and righteous. The new man in Christ. Who is this new man? It's talking about Jesus Christ. Galatians four six. For God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. It actually begins this way. Because you are sons, because we are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. The spirit of who? The spirit of Jesus Christ. First John chapter 4, verse 17. As Jesus Christ is, so are we in heaven. No, in this world right now. First uh, Corinthians six seventeen. For he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. I pray that the Holy Spirit quicken these scriptures to you. Ephesians five says this: that for this cause shall a man leave his his uh his parents or his mom and dad, and or his father, and he shall be joined unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. It doesn't stop there. This is, it goes on to say this: this is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Christ and you, my friend. Colossians chapter 2. This mystery which was hidden for ages and from generations. This mystery which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. What? Know ye not how that Jesus Christ is in you? This new man, you see, Jesus Christ came to create a new type of species, a new, an entire new human race who was not only human. And if you can bear it, just, con just continue to stick in if, you, if, if, if it's uh, too strong for you, but stick in, stick in, listen in, listen in. He came to, to bring a whole new type of man, someone who is immune to sickness, someone who, who, is, who rejects and repels poverty, someone who is healthy, someone who is full of power, someone who carries the wisdom of God. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. The Bible says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that you have the mind of Christ. He came to create a whole new species, one who has the wisdom of God, one who carries dominion on uh, in earth, on earth. Uh, in heaven and under the earth. Yes, that who who the very devils of hell tremble 
at my word, at your word. He came to give you a new life. He came to give you, uh, to make you a new man. It, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. That old nature is gone. The old spirit is gone. You have a new spirit. The new spirit is the spirit of Jesus Christ, who is fully God, fully man. The Bible says, as he is, so are you in this world, who is immune to sickness, who cannot get sick. I should say, who does not get sick? You, who repels poverty? Who is not dumb, who is not slow, who is not weak, who is strong, who has dominion on earth, in heaven, and under the earth. This new man is superior to Satan. We are superior to Satan, to devils in hell. They obey and they tremble at my presence, at your presence. When they know who you know, that you know who you are, I'm telling you, this is why. If you are able to grasp it, grasp this. Though the trials of life may come, though the winds may blow, though the waves crash and hit that house, that house, your life will not crumble down. Though though the waves come through the winds, hit you, hit your life through trials, through whatever comes to your. That's why the Bible says, though I am I am more than convinced that no devil in hell, no principality, no power, no affliction, no peril, nor sword can separate us from the love of God. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. This this new man is more than a conqueror. This new man is not a not just a human being anymore. The, the spirit that I am is the spirit of Jesus Christ. The spirit that you are is the spirit of Jesus Christ. This new man is superior to Satan, to superior to sickness, superior to poverty, superior to devils, superior to religious folks. This new man has complete dominion and authority. On earth, in heaven, and under the earth, you rule and reign in life through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. That's what the Bible says. This is what Jesus Christ came to bring. So you, you, you have to begin to, to think this way and realize who you are in Christ. You are a spirit. You can't see your spirit. You can't. You can't feel your spirit with your physical senses. The, but you have to find out your identity in the in the scriptures. And I'm telling you, this is uh, this is strong. But I felt in my heart that the Lord, like I, I can't. I'm not, and I will not keep my mouth shut from the type of revelation and spiritual meat that God has given to me. Not for me to sit on it, not for me to build my platform, but he's giving me this for you who are listening. Because I, because I don't care. And a lot of people, and this is the crazy part, that I, as I've been in ministry for what, like a year and a half now? How I've seen people that know the truth but are have no cojones to speak out, man. Whether it's because they don't want to lose friendships, maybe because they don't want to lose their reputation, maybe they want they don't want to lose their uh, endorsement from a denomination, whatever it is. But I don't care. This is what God has has uh, made you. He's made you a king, a priest. He's made you to have authority. And if you could understand it, He didn't come to bring religion. He came to replicate Himself in you. Replication is what Jesus came to bring. The new creation is the crowning achievement of Jesus Christ, not the the redemption. He came to he came to destroy the work of the devil, but put that man to death. And he came to give you new God came Jesus Christ came came so God can give you a new birth, and that new birth is the new creation in Christ. So remember, how do we begin this podcast? Visualize what I'm talking about on a piece of paper. One side is the old man. Whatever single vice that you battle with in life, put it on that side. As we close right now, put it on that side. Whatever addictions, whatever mental torments, whatever sickness, whatever, whatever, put it on that side. I'm, I'm telling you, people are going to get healed just by listening to this because just by coming to the truth. 
but it, put 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 it a uh, inferiority complex, cancer, anxiety, depression on one side, fear, whatever. Put all those things on one side. That man is that now. Now draw the line, and on the other side, put put the spirit of his son, put Jesus Christ in Christ, power, dominion, health, prosperity, healing, dominion, authority. King, rule, son of God. So you don't have to deal with those things anymore that are on that left side. Begin to think this way. And again, like I said, this is something that you have to, that I have to, like renew our minds every single day. Why? Because our minds are natural. Our minds are, are carnal. There is a propensity for our mind because there's still, there still have not been, the carnal mind has not yet been redeemed. It forgets. But the more and more and more that you become established in this fact, the more and more it'll become one with you and you'll begin to think just like a, a muscle, muscle memory. It takes repetition. And before you know it, you're going to be thinking this way without even trying to think this way. So before we, uh, before I, I sign off of this, I want to give this opportunity to anyone who, who is listening in. Maybe you came across. Maybe maybe you came across this uh, from your coworker. I, I don't know how you came across this, but I want to give you this opportunity. This new life, what I'm talking about, it is only available when you receive Jesus Christ. What do I have to do, Anthony? Do I have to fast? Do I have to get my life together? Nothing. 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 Come as you are, without one plea. Come as you are. Come in that sinful state. Come in that broken state. You're not gonna stay in that state though. You will receive eternal life in the old man. The old life that you've been wanting to shed off will be put to death and you will receive eternal life. You receive this eternal life by believing that God sent his son into the world for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. That if you would believe, if you would believe, believe in Jesus Christ and confess him as your Lord and Savior, you shall be saved. Repeat this, this very brief prayer with me say father in jesus name i believe in the son of god i confess jesus as my lord and savior i receive eternal life right now in jesus name amen if you pray that prayer we're gonna uh, i'm gonna leave all the information on the description of the podcast go to our website click on that information get plugged in i want to know uh, who's listening in? There's also some free free stuff. M my wife, Drez, she's the one that handles all this stuff. So, But there's free stuff that, that we give out. And so just click on that information and we'll hook you up and we'll get you plugged in. The last thing that we, I want to do before we, uh, we log off, I want to give you this opportunity to sow a seed or in other words, to give. The Bible says this, that if you receive spiritual meat, then it is only right that if, if you have reaped spiritual meat from the teacher, from the minister, it is only right for the minister to, receive, to reap of your material goods. In other words, it's very simple. If I go to In-N-Out and, and I eat a 4 by 4 which are delicious, I eat it, I say, thank you, was, this meat was great, it brought nourishment, it brought me life. I'm not going to go down to Jack in a Box across the street and then give the money for the burger that I just ate. If this has blessed you, if this has helped you, if this has uh, quickened you, because I'm, I can, I can almost guarantee that it, this, the, the, what I just said right now in this, in this episode, and in the other episodes that we talk about, very scarcely said in the church. And I say it with scriptures back to back to back, without, w without. Because without me, like, someone asked me, do you take sermon notes? No, I don't take sermon notes. I minister out of my heart. So if you've been blessed, then it is only right for you to, to sow, not out of, of condemning or fear, but sow out of love, out of gratitude. But what we minister here at Truth is true riches, spiritual meat. So I want to challenge you not to only give, but but to to give generously. All the information to give is going to be on the on the information below, whatever avenue you're listening in. 
click on that information, give, and I'm telling you, you're already blessed, but God will begin to manifest those things in life. I'll talk about that on a whole different episode. But I love you guys. Share this podcast. Um, it's it's amazing to know that people are getting touched, saved, healed, delivered from this podcast. So love you guys. Stay plugged in.